What's going on guys? So I have an interesting question that I want to I want to throw at you all and I'd love to hear your feedback because this is definitely one of those areas where I feel as if you all could probably provide better feedback to me than I could provide on this topic. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so this question is one that's gonna have multiple facets to it. So please hang in there with me and I think you're gonna see where I'm going with this. So the question I have is, if you were shopping for an RV, which I know a lot of you may be shopping for an RV. I know a lot of you may have recently purchased an RV or maybe you're considering getting an RV in the future. We've all seen the videos that have been you know, posted about different types of issues you could have when buying an RV. A lot of people assume that every RV is just manufactured horribly and you should never buy an RV. Those folks probably shouldn't chime in on this because if you're never planning on buying an RV, then this really doesn't apply to you. But, um, you know, this question that I'm about to ask really has nothing to do with any specific manufacturer. I'm not collaborating with any group, company, organization, anything to come up with this content or this topic. It's just one that was kind of curious to me. I've been on the road for a couple of hours now, and I was just kind of thinking about different topics, and this was one that really stood out based on a lot of the content that I've produced around RV upgrades, RV quality, frame flex, frame failure, all of this stuff. So the question is, if you look at the RVs in the price category that you're shopping for, instead of me just coming out and saying, you know, a $30,000 RV range or, you know, 50,000 or a 200,000, I'm just gonna say in the price category that you are shopping for. Now, before I ask the question, I want you to also consider where I'm going with this. And where I'm going with this is, if you could deduct money that goes into one specific area of the RV and reinvest it in another area, that's the part you have to kind of wrap your mind around here. So let's say that you specifically picked the $50,000 price bracket for an RV. And you know that could mean a lot of different types of RVs, but traditionally that's gonna mean a high-end travel trailer or a really low-end fifth wheel or a typical middle-of-the-road travel trailer. That's typically gonna mean a middle-of-the-road travel trailer manufacturer. When I say middle-of-the-road, I mean nothing that's gonna be too crazy overbuilt, nothing that's gonna be too crazy underbuilt. It's gonna provide you a lot of amenities, things like that that you might be looking for. So let's just, again, as an example, let's take a $50,000 RV. And I'm talking about sale price, not MSRP. So this, this RV might have a $75,000 MSRP, but the sale price on it at most RV dealerships would be, let's just say $50,000 in that specific range. Now, if you take that type of mentality, I'm shopping for a travel trailer that's gonna cost me at the end of the day around $50,000. And I walked through them and Probably a lot of people watching this video have shopped RVs in that price range, probably walked through a lot of them on dealership lots, probably have a good idea of the differences one manufacturer in that range might have over another one. But at the end of the day, I assume you all probably come to the same conclusion I do. They're all roughly the same in terms of build quality. They're all roughly the same in terms of amenities. The difference oftentimes are little things, little amenities. Do they put, you know, a, a touch screen control, you know, inside versus, um, versus normal switches? Do they have an upgraded mattress? Do they put a nicer countertop material in over another one? Uh, do they have a little bit nicer suspension over another one? You understand that pretty much all RV manufacturers within the same price range are doing very similar things. Now they may be executing on them in different ways with maybe different colors. Maybe one of them puts some cool drawer organizer where another one may put like a glass cleaner, things like that. But again, we all kind of understand where I'm going with this. Now, the question I have is if you could take $5,000 out of that price, but it doesn't just disappear. You don't get the RV for $5,000 less. 
you take five grand out of the price and you reinvest it into something else. So when I say you take it out, you're dropping amenities, you're dropping features, you're dropping things that add up to approximately $5,000 worth of cost. And then you have to find a way to put that back into the RV in areas that matter more to you. What would you do? Leave a comment on this one. And this may be, you know, this may be opening it up to really lengthy comments, but let me give you an example. If I find a $50,000 sale price RV and I look at what I get for that price and I'm like, you know what? I don't need a central vacuum. Or you know what? I don't need two air conditioning units. Or perhaps I don't need a torsion suspension system if I'm looking at specific brands that have that. I'd be willing to sacrifice that add up a lot of things that equal $5,000 worth of amenities. Maybe I don't need a convection microwave if it has one, or maybe I don't even need a microwave. What would I be personally willing to deduct, or what would my family be willing to deduct from that unit that would add up to $5,000 approximately? And then what would I do with that money if I had to put it back into the RV from a manufacturing standpoint, right? So if I removed you know, certain appliances, if I removed certain things from the RV, but then I had to find out what would I add in lieu of those things that are worth about five grand, what would those be? You know, let's say it already has Goodyear Endurance tires. Let's say it already has an upgraded equalizer with heavy duty shackle straps, greasable wet bolts. Let's say that it has two ACs or maybe even three ACs. Would I be willing to eliminate some of those to perhaps say I want solid Corian quartz or granite countertops, or perhaps I want uh, dovetail drawers, or perhaps I just want better build quality. Maybe we're going to invest more money into slowing the production line down. I'm willing to give up the second AC. I'm willing to give up the upgraded suspension. I'm willing to give up these features, which could actually lend themselves to a better built unit in the long run, because I would rather invest that money in making sure that the RV is just solidly put together with the materials that are remaining. I might only have one AC. I might only have you know, a standard equalizer and nothing upgraded there. I may have, you know, standard windows instead of perhaps upgraded windows. I may have a cheaper TV or possibly no TV at all where I have to add that later, but I'm willing to sacrifice all of that because I would rather take the $5,000 that typically would be spent on those amenities and installing them and put it back into just the overall construction quality of the RV, knowing what I'm giving up to get that. That's the question that, that I really think manufacturers wanna know the answer to as well. I think they wanna know what are you all as consumers willing to give up and what you want in exchange for giving that stuff up. Because if I say it's a $50,000 RV, then I say, okay, well the manufacturer's willing to spend $5,000 more, which means a dealership is willing to pay that much more for the RV to be on their lot would somebody still buy it, right? How often is $1,000 the difference between a make it or break it sale? How often is $500 the difference between a make it or break it sale? And again, the question here ultimately is, in your opinion, if you look at a $50,000 or a $20,000 RV, and you wanna eliminate, let's just say five grand out of that, in, in terms of stuff that the manufacturer is putting in their units today, and you're like, I will give up all of that easily, no problem at all, if it means I get this in exchange. But you have to reinvest it into something related to the actual RV. You can't just say, I'm gonna give up the, the $5,000 and it's just gonna be discounted off the RV and I don't need any of that other stuff returned back into it. And the point here ultimately is to understand when there is compromise, where you're willing to compromise, if the price of the RV at the end of the day is gonna remain the same, it's still 50 grand, but you had more say-so in terms of what you got in the RV versus what they're providing you, what would you do? Would you give up you know, three appliances or at least quality appliances or nicer appliances in exchange for a nicer TV or in exchange for a fiberglass roof? 
or in exchange for torsion suspension or disc brakes. These are things that manufacturers probably want to know and it's super important to them to understand specifically what you want and what you're willing to pay for and what you would not want to pay for if you had that option given the fact that the RV price itself isn't going to change. So think about that. Like I said, this is kind of a multifaceted question. It's going to have some complexity with how it can be answered. And I'm really interested in seeing what you all think when it comes to you know, the control over what goes into an RV, what you want with that RV, and what you're willing to give up in exchange for what you want with that RV, if all that makes sense. Anyways, guys, please leave a comment below. I am super interested in knowing your feedback, your comments, and again, please be practical and responsible with your answer. You know, understanding that, yeah, I, I'm willing to give up, you know, upgraded this, that, or the other. I'm willing to give up some of these features that they're throwing in. If you simply say, I'm willing to give up a paint color or a cabinet color choice, well, that really doesn't add much to the cost. So you can't really say, I want to, I'd rather have, you know, a brown interior because that's $5,000 worth of of accessories, it's not, right? That's just something that they pick each year and they make a color determination based off of what they think the trends are. But appliances, features, upgrades, these are all things that absolutely add cost to an RV. LED lights versus incandescent lights. May not be much of a cost, but it's some. But you could swap every LED light out for incandescent and probably only save 50 bucks. So that's not really, one of those things that you can factor into this because at the end of the day, it doesn't really account for a heck of a lot of cost. What does account for a lot of cost are axles, tires, the brake system, the air conditioning units, the amenities on the inside of the RV, your sofa, your love seat, your TV, fireplace, things like that. What would you give up and what would you use that money to reinvest into the RV? And would you be happy with the RV by doing so? Anyways, guys, please leave a comment below. Again, super interested in knowing what you all think on this topic. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll be back and talk to you again very soon and discuss some of the answers.